Greetings, Goblinoids, and welcome to Elder Goblin Games, a place where the DCs are made up and the stats don't matter. That's right, just like the ending to your supposed campaign. They don't exist. <laughs> oh, and before I forget, apparently July is Independent RPG Month, according to Professor Dungeon Master, and he's a professor, so I'll take him at his word. And some of these are indie RPGs, so I, that counts. Minimum effort, but I did it. Today I'm here to talk about a topic that's very near and dear to my heart. My top 13 non-D&D TTRPGs that I'd like to run right now. These are just in order of how much I'm familiar with them and how much I want to play them right now. Like, if I had a group tonight, what would I run? Another large factor for the games I choose these days is my mental load and capacity has been... Uh, diminished for some reason or another. I can't really think of why. If you're following anything in the TTRPG hobby space right now, then your YouTube feed is probably over-encumbered, see what I did there, with videos about a certain rules refresh that nobody asked for. <laughs> Sorry, not salty at all or anything. I'm just really, really bored with the epic fantasy genre right now, and it looks like D&D is headed in a direction that I'm not at all interested in. So. Here are 13 alternatives to playing the one game from those wizards at that one beach. So, without further ado, let's get into number 13, Savage Worlds. This is a genre-agnostic universalist game, meaning it can cover everything from urban fantasy, detective noir, steampunk, cyberpunk, whatever else punk, or just good old classic medieval fantasy. This might be the perfect game for you and your group to try especially if they're coming from games like 5e and Pathfinder, and they still want a good bit of character customization and power level, but a more streamlined and easy-to-grasp system. The only reason this game isn't higher on my list is because I haven't actually run it myself, which is going to be a common theme for the next two games as well. In the spot I can't get to. Number 12, Crown and Skull. This game has such a fresh and interesting take on the fantasy TTRPG genre, and I cannot wait to try it. Crown and Skull is a player-facing game that centers around the character's abilities, equipment, and spells that the players come up with themselves, meaning much more of the mechanics are offloaded from the GM and put into the hands of your players, trusting them to carry the bulk of the action as much as, if not more than the GM. Players declare their own skill rolls, defense checks, and use hero points to build their equipment and abilities. There are no stats or even hit points in Crown and Skull, but instead it uses an attrition system where you cross off equipment and skills as you take on injuries. This may be one of the most unique role-playing games out there, and I would expect nothing less from old Hanker and Furnail from the Runehammer team. I highly recommend it if you want to shake up your table's playstyle, especially if you've fallen into tired stereotypes and generic themes. Crown and Skull is guaranteed to get you and your players thinking on a different plane of existence. The shadows are dark in the dungeon. The shadows are dark in the forest. <laughs> Number 11. Umbra Umbras. I think that's Latin for Shadow Dark. I know it's only the most popular Neo Trad retro clone on the market right now, and yes, that's what I'm going to call it. Shadow Dark takes all the good things from old school gaming and smashes that together with more modern mechanics that favor intuitive design over clunky charts and bloated rules. That's right, Thacko. I don't need you anymore. I don't need you anymore. Not only that, but its layout and design is super simple, straight to the point, and doesn't waste a word on any page. That gets huge points in my book. But it doesn't just steal from the old and new. Shadow Dark has its own showcase of innovative mechanics, as well as very streamlined character creation and advancement. This is absolutely as high on my list as a game I've never played can be. I would run it tonight if people showed up at my house and didn't wake up my kid. Number 10 and number 9. I'm going to cheat a little bit and just cram the next two together. So here's 8 and 9. Cairn and Knave. Mostly because they have a lot of similarities, but they stand out on their own merits for different reasons. They are about the most lightweight systems humanly possible, especially Knave 1. I think it's something like 10 or 15 pages, and that includes a D100 spell list. They're both classless systems with an OSR style, and again, don't waste any of your time on word count. 
Karen has a lot of very good, very concise GM tips and a really cool spell system using inventory slots, which I'm probably going to steal from my own TTRPG that I'm writing. And Nave 2 has hands down the best D100 tables of any RPG out there. Seriously, it's a cool game, but it's worth the price just for the tables alone. Plus, you can use them with any fantasy game you're playing. I think these are both excellent games for new players and for players who want a little less rules and a little more imagination. Moving right along, numero ocho. Blades, 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 blades. In the dark, dark, dark. This is a game about rogues, scoundrels, thieves, and assassins. A narrative-driven RPG that specializes in running scenarios of intrigue and heists. Let's see, what can I say about Blades in the Dark that hasn't already been said a hundred times over? I think this is the perfect game for in-between games. When your players still want to meet up and roll dice, but your main game can't get together for one reason or another. Blades is perfectly suited for a low to no prep session because of the way it's set up. The choices your players make around their characters and crew will so naturally build a conflict that the session practically writes itself. After a few questions and maybe 5 to 15 minutes of prep, you can have a fun and thrilling game ready to go without much strain on the GM. Blades is a ton of fun and super easy to run if you like improv and narrative style games. I would put it a little higher on my list, except for the fact that it's very intrinsically tied to its genre and setting. But in my opinion, this is actually a boon that allows the GM to focus on story beats and not get lost in things like world building. Number 7. Shout out to Hanker and Fernale for making this list twice. Number 7 is ICRPG, otherwise known as Index Card RPG, otherwise known as Index Card Role Playing Game. I'm going to read this straight off of my script. Index Card RPG feels like a more lightweight, more efficient version of D&D. It's a perfect game for folks who want to try D&D but don't want to spend an hour building characters for a one-shot or short campaign. It's full of inspiring game master tips and rules that will feel like quick hacks for games like D&D 5e. There are modifiers in place of derivative stats and simple mechanics for things like target numbers, hit points, equipment, and spells. This game really distills fantasy RPGs into their core elements and gives plenty of breathing room for creativity and good old role-playing shenanigans. Plus, it has options for fantasy, sci-fi, paranormal westerns, superheroes, and an interesting post-apocalyptic Ice Age world. This is an excellent addition to any collection, whether you're a brand new player or an old grognard. Yes, that is how it's pronounced because it's French or something. Like me. He has a certain je, je ne sais quoi, this grognard. Okay, <laughs> I promise I won't do that again. <laughs> this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave some comments, and hit that little bell icon. Make sure it says all and not personal. Because Professor Dungeon Master has taught me that that means you'll miss out on all my cool videos and only get the ones the YouTube robots want you to have. Don't let the YouTube robots win. All right, get ready to break out your forklifts because it's time for number six. Cyber, cyber, cipher, 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 system, system. I'm, I'm really nailing it tonight. Sleep deprivation is a thing. Anyways, this hefty tome Despite its size and grandeur, I would almost call this a rules light system. I challenge you to find a more customizable, mechanically customizable system with a lighter weight rule set. I know people are going to come at me in the comments and say this is not rules light, but just look at running it as a GM. It's like pretty much no number one through ten, and that's how you run a monster. The rest is like flavor, pretty much. So yeah, yeah, they're going to come at me, but that's fine. They always do. Cypher System just might have the largest selection of character options for any game I've ever played. And while there is a certain level of complexity that builds as you level up, it never really gets out of hand. Running the game on the GM side of screen is as easy as picking a number between 1 and 10. No, seriously. It's that simple. Not to mention, this is probably my favorite universal game out there. It just has every trope you can think of for just about any genre of game. If there's any complaint I have, it's that there are almost too many options. Looking through the character creation section can be downright overwhelming, but if the idea of all that creativity and world building feels daunting, Numenera is their sci fantasy version of the game that has just about the most well thought out and fresh take on the genre possible, with what feels like aeons of history already written and a ton of really cool, unique monsters and worlds. Seriously, though, I wasn't even interested in sci fantasy until I flipped through these books. 
we go from one weighty tome to the next. Number five. <laughs> gotcha, it's DCC. This is a beefy boy, though. Holy crap, it's 500 pages. If you are looking for a fun, zany, gonzo, classic-feeling fantasy game that is somehow still high-octane, it's right here in the name, baby. Dungeon Crawl Classics. I mean, what other TTRPG are you going to find with a guy wearing striped pants on the back? Dungeon Crawl Classics is exactly what you imagine it is. A low fantasy, gritty, meat grinder of a game with lots of random elements and, of course, dungeons. This game has some of the best written, most digestible adventure modules currently on the market. And there's a ton of them. They are full of wacky, crazy, creative ideas, and man, do they turn up the weird to 11. This is a game you don't want to take too seriously and don't want to get too invested in any one character. This is rags to riches at its best. You've probably heard of its infamous funnel system where you take a bunch of gong farmers and bakers and see who survives the chaos. But the game does have a decent bit of power creep at higher levels. I found that I personally only enjoy running until about level 5, which is probably equivalent to about level 10 in a lot of modern games. DCC captures an old school feel without making you feel like you're filing your taxes each session. This is a game where you definitely want to roll in the open and let the fates decide. Number four, Burning Wheel. This might be a controversial take to be so high on my list, but I think Burning Wheel is a narrative experience unlike any other game you've ever played. Yeah. This is a cool book. I mean, just look at this. All right, get ready. This is my anchor and fur impression. This is like... This is like a book that you want to take out while you're at the bar, you know? That was not a good hand for no impression. This is a game that somehow makes narrative storytelling and character building crunchy. I know it sounds too weird to be true, but seriously, by the time you've chosen your beliefs, instincts, and traits, you'll have something akin to a Game of Thrones style character written. Plus, the way your characters are tied through relationships and circles naturally creates interesting stories. I don't think I've seen another game with more of a mechanical focus on the narrative. In fact, playing to your character's beliefs, instincts, and traits can earn you points called Artha to be spent to influence the story, bolster your other skills, and things like shrugging off pain. Burning Wheel is at times more crunchy than I usually enjoy, and some of the layout is admittedly a little clunky. It's a game that definitely requires the right GM and the right group. There's also a sister game to this called Mouse Guard, which is a bit of a rules update and a cleaner layout and everything, but it's got the kind of Mouse Guard vibes if you've ever seen that comic series, which I like the aesthetic of Burning Wheel just a little bit better. Speaking of mice, it's time to talk about Mouse Ritter. You knew it was coming. It's on the thing. Yep, Mouse Ritter. The tag should have been, the mice may be small, but their tails are huge. Yeah, yeah. I think this might be the perfect RPG for kids and new players, and the themes really evoke the imagination in a big way. Mouse Ritter is an extremely lightweight fantasy game based loosely on the Into the Odd OSR system. However, there are things about Mouse Ritter's style and layout that really caught my imagination. The game is extremely easy to comprehend and only uses three stats, roll under saves, and a unique slot-based inventory system. Plus, the box set comes with all these little handy punch-out cards that are great for kids or even visual learners. Combat is straightforward, attacks always hit, and armor reduces incoming damage. I think this might be a perfect first RPG RPG for kids, and the themes and art really evoke your imagination in a big way. Despite the small nature of your characters, because they're nice. And there's no reason not to check it out, because the PDF is free on itch.io slash mouse ritter. M-A-U-S-R-I-T-T-E-R. Second to last. This may shock some of you. It may even cause you discomfort, but I don't care. Number two is a game that is very near and dear to my heart. Mazes and monsters. I mean, just mazes, no monsters. There are monsters, but not the Tom Hanks kind. Mazes just might be the perfect game to introduce new people to the hobby, especially if they're not familiar with the trappings of tabletop games. It's super easy to make a character. You just ask about three questions to figure out what someone wants to play, then the character sheet does the rest. The mechanics are dead simple and use things like hearts instead of HP. Mechanics that anyone who's played Zelda will immediately understand. And the gameplay is so fluid that you'll never get bogged down with the rules. 
In fact, the rules often just get out of the way so that you can enjoy the action. The book has a lot of great recommendations, like dropping the player straight into the action to start rolling dice. No preamble in the end, just good old sword and sorcery. The type of role your character will play is decided by the dice you roll, and the percentage chances are built right into the target numbers you're trying to hit. No math needed. Get out of here, math elites. This game is perfect for one-shots, organized play, and folks who want a casual beer and pretzels experience, without getting too much into character building and finicky rules. Drum roll, please. My number one pick, Dragon Bane. Or as the Swedish like to call it, Jakar Ach de Monair. I probably butchered that. I'm sure I did. I'm not sure why I'm only just now discovering Drakar Ach de Monair, the Swedish version of D&D that's been parading around with fantasy Darkwing Duck art since the mid-80s. But man, has this game captured my interest. Dragon Bane might be, for my money, the best D&D alternative and box set on the market. If you want a not-so-invincible superhero fantasy that doesn't have your players cowering from every fight with simple yet intuitive roll under mechanics and a combat system that won't have your players' eyes glazing over while they wait 5-10 to 10 minutes for the next turn, then this might be the game for you. The monsters are dead simple to run. You don't even need to read them ahead of time. And combats have just enough nuance to make impactful choices without being overly complex. In fact, I was really captured by this idea of choosing between attack versus defense. It's just an interesting take that I don't think a lot of other RPGs are doing. Character creation is quick, but with enough options to cover all your bases. And Advancement has a different and interesting take where you stockpile points to spend on skills, heroic abilities, and things like that. Not to mention the box set comes with a ton of fun adventures, as well as a solo adventure that gave me a chance to try out the game myself before running it for my players. This game just checks so many boxes for TTRPGs for me and doesn't feel like you're cramming for the SATs with a academic sized tome. Well, those are my top 13 picks for non D&D TTRPGs that I wanna play right now. Let me know what games I missed down in the comments or what games you are now interested in playing because of this video. And of course, don't forget to check out my other videos somewhere right here for more TTRPG and universal system tips and tricks and cool hacks and life hacks and uh, just general RPG nonsense. Thanks for watching and as always, remember, make mistakes, choose chaos, and most importantly, have fun. I have scoured to the heart of the archives deep and traveled to the top of the cinder cloud peaks and forded the ever plains for the answers I see. So beware of the realms where you meddle, for the fates can be fickle when the dice settles.